Yeah, they're expecting a pretty huge Christian rally here tonight. However, progressive Christians disagree with Franklin Graham when it comes to his support of President Trump. The rally here this evening expected to be a, a mix of politics and religion. Mr. Graham's rally is titled Decision America. In previous rallies, he has told the crowds country is in chaos. A progressive leader here in Greensboro says there's nothing wrong with being political. And sometimes you have to be political in order to be faithful. The problem is when we equate the kingdom of God with a particular party and we move over from political to partisan. At this point in our nation's history, make a decision to follow another path and be faithful to what it means to care for the least, the last, and the left out, then that, I think, is the, is the path that the prophets, the true prophets, would be on. I don't know, they've just put, been putting Trump down, putting him down, but I think, feel like this is the way I feel in my heart, that uh, he's done more for the country than any president's been up there. What would you like to hear Franklin Graham say about the situation? Just see what he had to say, but I believe it'll be good. Franklin Graham scheduled to speak at 7 o'clock tonight at the White Oak Amphitheater. This is part of the Coliseum Complex here in Greensboro. And again, this event is free and open to anyone who cares to come on out tonight. In Greensboro, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Thank you, Bill. The federal government tonight is rejecting a disaster relief request to help people impacted by Hurricane Dorian. This would have assisted people whose homes and businesses were damaged by that storm. Governor Roy Cooper made the request on behalf of individuals in four different counties. The FEMA associate administrator says federal and local assessment teams determined the damage from that storm did not warrant individual assistance. The governor's office plans to appeal that ruling. President Trump did approve a major disaster declaration that allows FEMA to reimburse several counties for the cost of things like debris removal and other services. Turkey launched a major assault on Kurdish fighters in northern Syria today. The attacks began after U.S. troops pulled back from the area. Kurdish fighters are longtime U.S. allies who helped defeat ISIS forces in Syria. President Trump says the United States does not endorse the attack and thinks it's a bad idea. Turkey wants to create a safe zone on their border, believing the Syrian Kurds are terrorists. For the first time, Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden is calling for President Trump to be impeached. Biden made these remarks while campaigning in New Hampshire. Donald Trump has violated his oath of office, betrayed this nation, and committed impeachable acts. The former VP went on to say the president is, quote, shooting holes in the Constitution by asking foreign powers to interfere in the 2020 election. In a July phone call, the president asked Ukraine's leader for a favor of investigating Biden and his son Hunter. Meanwhile, House Democrats are in the middle of impeachment proceedings right now against the president based on that phone call, and the president is refusing to cooperate. Today, legal experts are weighing in on the president's strategy. Sally Kidd explains from our Washington newsroom. Kenny and Brianna, the president is claiming the investigation is illegitimate, so the administration will not be complying with subpoenas or allowing testimony. The key claim in the White House legal strategy that the impeachment inquiry is constitutionally invalid. The whole thing is a scam. It's a fix. Impeachment is constitutional. It's grounded in the Constitution. Um, which House does what is grounded in the Constitution. How they do it is dependent upon their rules. And the Constitution allows the House and Senate to set their own rules as to how the process plays out. But the White House claims there's a violation of due process because there's been no full House vote to begin a formal inquiry. Legal experts say there doesn't have to be, but at least one Democrat is now calling for it. A resolution for the inquiry structured in such a way that it uh, can move forward with full power of the Congress behind it. The letter also indicating potential executive branch witnesses cannot be compelled to testify because they're duty bound to protect confidentiality interests. Subpoenas will be received by uh, all of the people that the Congress wants to talk to. Uh, they will ignore those subpoenas at their peril. It's really about trying to delegitimize the impeachment process, trying to paint the impeachment process as political, as partisan, and thereby giving a pretext for the president and his allies to ignore it. The president's allies in Congress making clear they stand behind him. What we see in this impeachment is a kangaroo court. This whole thing is a fairy tale. 
Now, legal experts say Democrats have tools they can use to try to force compliance by the executive branch, and that includes going to court, finding people in contempt. In Washington, Sally Kett, WXII 12 News. Sally, thank you. Senator Bernie Sanders is back home recovering from a heart attack. He has not said when he'll return to the campaign trail. In an NBC News exclusive, the Democratic presidential candidate spoke to Harry Smith about some criticism his campaign's facing. It's a couple of days before we learned that you had a heart attack. There, there seemed to be this sense, well, the campaign must be hiding something. What's going on? That's nonsense. And I think that, you know, sometimes, I don't know what people think campaigns are. You know, we're dealing with all kinds of doctors. Who are, we wanted to have a sense of what the hell was going on, really. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're trying to do is understand what's going on and not run to the New York Times and have to report every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a baseball game. So I think we acted absolutely appropriately. This was the senator's first sit-down interview since his surgery. You can hear more from him tonight on NBC Nightly News. That starts at 6.30. The scariest thing I think I've ever been through in my life. An outbreak of a deadly disease in the western part of our state has a number of people considering legal action tonight. The struggles one man is facing as he recovers from Legionnaire's disease. Plus, how you can get a free fare ticket tonight mm. and help feed thousands of hungry families in the triad as well. Yeah, and it is a perfect night to head out to the fair. We have got clearing skies out there, very comfortable temperatures. There'll be a chill once the sun goes down. We're back into the 40s and 50s by tomorrow morning. I'll let you know how long the cool nights will last coming up. WXII 12 forecast is always available on the free WXII 12 app. Stay connected with Chief Meteorologist Lainey Pope on her Facebook page. 
New tonight, people related to a man diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease are hiring trial attorneys. Yeah, the family says he got quite ill after going to the North Carolina mm -hmm. Mountain State Fair last month in the town of Fletcher. Michael Petrie's family says he's weak and having difficulty with his kidneys. They say he went into a coma and was put on dialysis earlier this month. The scariest thing I think I've ever been through in my life. It really is just to not know if he's going to make it because they said only 60% of the people on the ECMO make it. And that's a big number of 40% that don't. The local health department says more than 100 people were diagnosed with that disease. They say most of those people went into the Davis Event Center while they were visiting the fair and walked by hot tub displays. They see classic fairs taking extra steps to prevent Legionnaire's disease. The fair's only water ride is a kid's paddle boat ride, and it's being disinfected daily, we're told. Organizers are also banning the use of mist fans, and they're not going to allow people to bring in handheld misters. WXII 12 is working to fight hunger here in the Piedmont Triad. Our next project community town hall focuses on college hunger. I'll be hosting a discussion in a couple of nights at North Carolina A&T State University on Friday. We're teaming up with Second Harvest for this one as we have for our previous two. And you can watch the whole thing live if you can't be there in person on the official WXII 12 Facebook page. It's scheduled to begin at 7 o'clock. You can help feed hungry families in the triad and get a free ticket to the fair tonight. Yeah, that's a win-win, isn't it? Crisis Control Ministry is hosting its annual food drive at the fair. Last year, you helped them fill a total of eight trucks with about 64,000 pounds worth of food. That's enough to help fill a number of pantries for at least four months. The goal this year, 68,000 pounds of food again. There are people from, from all over that come to the fair. And for them to recognize that what they're doing by bringing food here to help other people in the same community just feels like it's a big community effort to help our community. So 64,000 last year. Can we do another 4,000 this year and get to 68? Well, here's how it works. Five non-perishable food items get you a free ticket inside. That's all you need to do. It is only good for tonight. Organizers suggest bringing canned fruit, rice, beans, or pasta. And if you can't make it out there tonight, tomorrow is WXI Day at the fair. It's also Military Appreciation Day. Active and retired military and their families can get in free. I'll be out there in the afternoon along with Kenny, Chris Lee, Devontae McKinneth, and Lenny Pope. We'll hope you'll come by and say hello. Hang out with us at our booth. Well, there are few people who are better multitaskers <laughs> than moms. It's true. A correspondent for MSNBC proved it when her son wandered on set during a live segment. Take a look. We know that Turkey wants to, main, to establish what they call a safe zone along the border. Their concern is that they want, um, their concern is that they want to have a, a Kurdish, excuse me, my, my kids are here, live television. <laughs> well, you know, she handled it pretty well, I think. Despite being a little distracted for a second, Courtney Cube managed to explain the situation in pretty good detail. MSNBC tweeted the moment with the caption, sometimes unexpected breaking news happens while you're reporting breaking news. Reminds me of the um, BBC kid. Yes. Remember last year, yep. BBC yep. kid? That was a thing. Yep. <laughs> a lot of I kids think we've all had our kids yeah. here at one point or another, right? It happens. It happens. <laughs> you know, go ahead. Oh, I was no, just going to okay. let you take it away. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of kids are going to be headed out to the fair yep. for sure. Yeah, and that's a good idea to bring those canned goods and help out. And we've got great weather if you're going to be headed out yeah. to the fair. And if you're just going to be headed out this evening just to hang out, get great weather for that as well. Look at Greensboro where we've got clear skies across the area. We started off with the clouds, and yeah, those clouds did burn off pretty quickly. So that allowed us to get into the 70s. We talked about this yesterday, kind of anticipating those clouds to hang around a little bit longer. But We'll take 70s, right? As long as we don't have 80s and 90s. Our current temperature right now in Greensboro is 74 degrees with a light east northeast wind, which is helping out there at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. So it makes it feel really comfortable and fall like. You've got 74 in Martinsville and Mount Airy, 72 in North Wilkesboro. The high this afternoon is up to 75, just a few degrees above what is normal. So we've got a nice stretch of what we'll call seasonable high temperatures for October. A lot of 70s in the afternoon, some 50s at night. And we're going to see a series of fronts coming through. Unfortunately, none of these weather systems looks to be big rainmakers, but there may at least be a few spotty showers with them, and the best chance is going to be in the mountain communities. Now you see the clouds along the beach right now, and the mountains, you had clouds really hanging tough early today, and they'll likely kind of fill back in later on tonight and into tomorrow morning. We'll watch our temperatures, though, drop off. It's going to be a little cool in spots in the morning. Some upper 40s and some low 50s from the mountains to the foothills and the Piedmont Try it. So light jackets and sweatshirts early.
early tomorrow, but we end up in about the same place tomorrow afternoon with sunshine and temperatures that are in the low to mid 70s. So forecasting a high of 73 for late tomorrow afternoon, mostly sunny high of 72 in the foothills. We will start at 52 and in the mountains, upper 40s. Warming into the 50s by 9 a.m. and then high temperature just shy of 70 at about 69. Tomorrow night, NC State hosts Syracuse. So if you are headed over to Raleigh, your kickoff at 8 o'clock, make sure you bring your sweatshirt, your light jacket, because those temperatures will drop pretty quickly down into the low 60s during the game. Now we're going to turn our attention to a couple of areas. One is offshore and then the other is out of the Pacific Northwest. Offshore, there's several areas of low pressure that the Hurricane Center is monitoring. Nothing that is going to be headed our way. And that is because of this front right here. Yes, we keep having these fronts that sort of keep these tropical systems out over the Atlantic. So another one is on the way. And this one is going to provide winter weather in places like Colorado, Nebraska, up through the Dakotas. And you can see why. Not only is there moisture, but look how cold the air is. Temperatures are in the 20s and 30s. And that will be replacing some of the 60s that's out over the upper Midwest. And for us, it will sort of We'll warm up ahead of it into the upper 70s on Friday, and then we'll see those temperatures drop back down again once that front passes. So, yeah, we are going to have a little climb later in the week. 77 on Friday, temperatures in the upper 70s, close to 80 on Saturday when that front arrives. Expect a few showers with the mountain communities, and then we'll look for most of this to dry up as it comes down off the mountains. But we've decided to put in at least a slight chance for a passing shower on Saturday. And depending on where this front comes to rest on Sunday, we could see some spotty showers, especially in the the afternoon across the eastern triad. So if you look at the rainfall forecast, it's really very limited. And again, best rain chances are over the mountains and then down along the coastline. If you're going to be out this weekend, maybe you're going to head over to Tanglewood for Southern Charm at the farm. That is Saturday from 9 until 4, where they're going to have a lot of small businesses with their uh, crafts and artisans out there. So they encourage you to come on out and check out what we're doing here in the art community in the triad. Here's your seven day forecast. You got great weather for Saturday and for Sunday. Temperatures a little cooler on Sunday. And of course we do have that slight rain chance. Otherwise partly cloudy. Thanks, Lanny. Let's get a first check on traffic in this five o'clock hour. Here's what it looks like at US 29 at Cone Boulevard in Greensboro. Nothing doing in either direction. What well, is Wednesday and we are of course wearing pink for breast cancer awareness month. Yes, indeed. We even turned our news desk pink mm -hmm. all month long. We're partnering with our friends at American Cancer mm -hmm. Society to raise awareness and money for the fight against breast cancer. And every Wednesday we are wearing pink. The entire WXI 12 news staff is joining in on the cause. That's our assignment editor Katie and the photographer Chris Peterson. Everybody's getting in on the fun. Yeah, behind the scenes on camera, behind camera, uh, just post a photo of your pink using the hashtag WXII wears pink. And who knows, you could see some of your own photos on air and on our social media pages. We could be in for a really bad flu season where researchers are looking to make their prediction and who they say should get a flu vaccine now. Plus, a favorite childhood book character is returning to television. Why Nancy Drew actors say this story is timeless. You're watching WXII 12 News at 5 o'clock.
WXII 12 News is always available on the free WXII 12 app. Stay connected to Brianna Connor on her Facebook page. A favorite shot of book characters coming to the Triad CW tonight. Nancy Drew is an updated take on a beloved mystery yeah. series, and the stars say the characters still work. I think that, that Nancy has such a timeless quality because she's this rebel with a cause. You know, she's willing to do whatever it takes for justice and, and she's incredibly brave and incredibly skilled and cares about people and is willing to, to put her money where her mouth is. And I think that that's such an attractive quality in somebody that's, a, that's really truly committed to justice and righting wrongs. And I think that that's what keeps her around. People are endlessly curious about the idea of uncovering these things that are maybe not perfectly clear to all of us. And so I think Nancy represents uh, in a character the, the discovery of all of those sort of magical things that are happening in our lives and around us that we can't necessarily see day to day. And this is Hudson. Andy Drew premieres on the Triad CW tonight at 9 o'clock. Then be sure to stick around for WXI 12 News on the Triad CW starting at 10. Another couple is headed to prison for their role in that college bribery admission scandal with prosecutors say they did to get their daughter into Duke. Plus, the man's made his love for the Dixie Classic Fair permanent. A potential change that motivated him to get these tattoos. You're watching WXII 12 News. Tonight, a triad school district is pulling 20,000 Chromebooks out of its schools. And one of them overheated today and started smoking inside of a classroom. Here's a photo of what the Chromebook looked like afterwards. A student was using this at Louisville Elementary School. District leaders evacuated that school, and a staff member ended up using a fire extinguisher to put out the smoldering before the fire department got there. The Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District is pulling the use of all of its Chromebooks. Steve King is following the story for us tonight. We'll have more ahead at 6. 
happening now. A teenager is accused of dragging a Davidson County deputy with a vehicle. Investigators say the deputy pulled the car over on Old Highway 52 near Bradley Tysinger Road because the deputy thought someone inside the car was wanted. Investigators say a 17 year old Nicholas Myers eventually took off while the deputy was still near the car and ended up dragging him a short distance. That deputy is being treated for his injuries right now. Here's a mugshot of the suspect, Nicholas Myers. They say he drove through the woods, then hid in a house where they found him and arrested him. He is charged with assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer. Happening now, people are lining up to hear Franklin Graham speak in Greensboro. The stop is part of his Tar Heel State Tour. The speech is expected to include a mix of politics and religion. Graham will speak at the White Oak Amphitheater at 7 o'clock tonight. He's the son of the late Reverend Billy Graham. Well, it is a cool fall yep. day in Mount Airy. Finally, perfect weather for this weekend's Autumn Leaves Festival. Lainey, we've got festivals, we've got fairs as well. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is nice weather going to stick around? Oh yeah, we do have some beautiful weather out there, not only today, but also in the forecast. You're taking a look downtown at Mount Airy, where we've got the blue skies and we have temperatures that are in the 70s. Our current temp is 74 degrees right now in Mount Airy. Low humidity, low dew points, and a light breeze. So this is some pretty terrific fall air we've got in place. 72 in North Wilkesboro. You've got high 60s from Galax to Hillsville. It's a little bit warmer where we've had more sun. Those temperatures shooting up into the mid to upper 70s in Burlington and Lexington. Autumn Leaves Festival starts in downtown Mount Airy. Friday continues Saturday and Sunday. We've got comfortable temperatures for you. It's going to get a little bit warm in the afternoon for a couple of hours. We'll have some passing clouds on Saturday. There is a slight chance we could see a shower passing through to be very short lived. On Sunday, cooler air returns with highs closer to 70. There's also a chance we may see a spotty shower. We're going to talk about those rain chances and we'll look ahead at more detail the weekend forecast coming up. Lenny, thank you very much. Conflict is coming on the heels of President Trump's decision to pull out of uh, pull troops out of Syria. Yeah, Turkey has moved into the region already, taking aim at Kurdish forces and drawing harsh criticism from lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Matt Pritchard is in D.C. tonight with more on this developing situation overseas. Matt. Oh, plumes of smoke and booming explosions have been heard in all of this as calls for a change in course continue to come from Capitol Hill. Turkish forces on the move Wednesday, advancing into northeastern Syria just days after President Trump said U.S. troops would pull back from the area. I feel that uh, we are doing the right thing. Airstrikes and artillery have followed, aimed at Syrian Kurdish fighters who fought alongside the U.S. to defeat ISIS in the region. Now, President Trump said in a statement, the United States does not endorse this attack and has made it clear to Turkey that this operation is a bad idea. But lawmakers in Washington have questioned the whole strategy. My colleagues on both sides of the aisle are, are very stupefied. I mean, where did this come from? With Republicans like Lindsey Graham saying on Fox News Channel's Fox and Friends. If we pull out, mm -hmm. uh, the Kurds are in a world of hurt and ISIS comes back and President Trump will own it. It's Lindsey, uh, and I'd feel differently. I think Lindsey would like to stay there for the next 200 years. Adding he's trying to remove the U.S. from being a police officer to the world. We're getting out of the endless wars. We have to do it. And eventually somebody was going to have to make the decision. There are comments that have experts and analysts split. Once, you know, the tanks start rolling, once the fighting starts, it would be impossible for President Trump to walk back from this decision. We don't have the capacity or capability to prevent them from doing this if they want to. Um, so the Turks are doing this on their own initiatives and the ball is really in their court. And reports suggest that the Kurds are suspending operations against ISIS militants uh, due to this action. In Washington, I'm Matt Pritchard reporting. Thank you, Matt. The president is scheduled to meet with Turkey's president at the White House on November 13th. Here's a look at some other headlines coming out of Washington, D.C. Tonight, Joe Biden is voicing his support for President Trump's impeachment. This is the first time the Democratic presidential candidate has talked about the impeachment inquiry. In a July phone call, our president asked Ukraine's leader for a favor of investigating Biden and his son Hunter. Meanwhile, the impeachment inquiry continues and the White House is bringing in a new outside counsel to fight it. The White House also sent House Democratic leaders an eight page letter detailing why it will not be cooperating with that inquiry. Look for more on these top stories tonight on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It begins in less than an hour, 630 right here on WXII. 
New tonight, a Duke University alumna and her husband will spend a month in prison for rigging their daughter's SAT and ACT scores. They are trying to improve her chances of getting in. This is part of the Operation Varsity Blues investigation. A judge sentenced Marsha and Gregory Abbott to a month in prison. Prosecutors say they paid $50,000 to have a test proctor change the scores. They pleaded guilty to fraud and conspiracy. In a letter to the court, Gregory Abbott says his actions were, quote, wrong and stupid. Actress Lori Laughlin and her husband, clothing designer Massimo Giannulli, are two more, two rather, of more than a dozen people charged in this same investigation. They're accused of paying $500,000 in bribes to get their daughters into the University of Southern California. They've pleaded not guilty and they're expected back in court in January. Actress Felicity Huffman and former Wake Forest University head volleyball coach Bill Ferguson are also charged in this case. A judge sentenced Huffman to 14 days in prison. She admitted to paying someone to correct answers on her daughter's SAT. She's expected to start her sentence later on this month. Ferguson has pleaded not guilty in this case. Federal investigators say he received a $100,000 payment to help a waitlisted student get into Wake Forest. Let's get another check on traffic right now. Here's a live look. Highway 52 at 16th Street in Winston-Salem. Southbound lanes moving along at a decent clip. Northbound a little slow and go at this hour. No wrecks, just your evening rush hour commute. All right, your dinner tonight could arrive on a fire truck on Sounds purpose. Pretty neat. Yeah, Domino's is teaming up with the Elkin Fire Department for Fire Prevention Week. Anyone who orders a pizza from the Elkin Domino's tomorrow night between 6 and 9 could be selected. If the fire alarms at home work, the pizza's free. If not, firefighters are going to install a new one or replace the batteries for you. In the world again, mm -hmm. what, someone, what Simone Biles is saying about Team USA's big victory as she prepares to go for even more hardware. Plus, a new report on breast cancer in America. Who is most at risk? And an important reminder from survivors and doctors.
The USA Gymnastics team is the best on the planet again. Yeah, feels good to have those bragging rights, right? Led by Simone Biles, of course, the team won its fifth straight world title in Germany. This is the 21st World Championship medal for Biles, and that's the most ever for any female gymnast. Team USA won the top spot, followed by Russia and Italy. Biles says this team title means a lot to her. You know, it's really exciting, especially since I'm a veteran on the team and we have a rookie here this year, but to show the strength of the U.S. team year after year after year, even with a couple bobbles and falls out there, it's just amazing and it's exhilarating. And Biles could win even more medals. The individual titles are up for grabs later on this week. Some hockey fans who get upset during home games can take out their frustration on TVs and dishes now. This is the Rage Room in Philadelphia, where the fans there do have a certain reputation, at yeah. least some of them. It's a safe place for Flyers fans to blow off steam during the game. They can use hockey sticks, bats, and sledgehammers. Safety gear is required. Well, that's nice. Well, <laughs> now to pig races. A man's fair favorites are also permanently on his arm. What motivated him to get these tattoos? Well, if you're planning your trip to the fair this week, I'll tell you which days will be the warmest. There's a look at Stewart, Virginia with blue skies. Leaves not changing just yet, but we've got a fall feel in the air. Well, tomorrow is WXII Day at the Dixie Classic Fair. It's also Military Appreciation Day. Active and retired military, as well as their families, can get in for free. It'll be, a, I will rather, be out there in the afternoon along with Kenny, Chris Lee, Devontae McKinneth, and Lainey Pope. So we certainly hope you'll come by and say hello. We're right outside the Education Building, yep. I think it is. Yeah, you'll see yeah. our booth. Mm -hmm. Right near the fried food.
Yeah. yeah. They do that on purpose, I think, oh, yeah. don't they? So we can yeah. just smell it all. It's like torture. Best seat in the house, yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. <laughs> I'm going to visit my friend Matt, see what he's frying up new this Ooh, year. Yeah. Always something new. Can't wait. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun planned for you tomorrow. So join us out there or join us here on TV. Take a look. There is the Dixie Classic Fair. See the Ferris wheel there in the center? Oh, there's the pirate ship going there in the background. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. It's going to come. Whoa. I always feel like I'm coming out of that thing when it starts to go up in the air, but it is fun. All right, well, we have got nice weather for the fair. If you're headed out there this evening, bring your canned goods. Help our community. We've got temperatures in the low 70s starting off later on tonight. We in the mid to uh, upper 70s. We're cooling off just a little bit with those temps dropping down into the lower 60s. Make sure you bring a jacket. Right now you've got 65 in Galax, 72 in North Wilkesboro, and 74 in Greensboro, as well as Winston-Salem. Here's what you can expect moving into tomorrow. We're going to have more of the same dry skies across the area as high pressure is going to be moving in. We are keeping the tropical or not yet tropical systems out over the Atlantic, and then we're sort of in the in-between two fronts and one is way out to the west. So we've got some time to enjoy this beautiful fall air. You've got temperatures in the upper 60s at noon tomorrow, 73 in the afternoon, mostly sunny skies, mostly sunny as well in the foothills with a light northeast wind, maybe some fog to start. We're going to be kind of cool in the morning with temperatures in the upper 40s, low 50s. Our high tomorrow is 72. Mountain forecast has a high of 69 tomorrow with mostly sunny skies. This is Thursday's map in the morning. You notice the low clouds up against the mountains. We burn those off. It is mostly sunny. Temperatures are seasonable. And then into Friday, we're waiting for our front, which is still out to the west. We start off cool 40s and 50s. It does warm up some on Friday. We'll see some mid to maybe upper 70s in the forecast by then. I mentioned these weather systems that the Hurricane Center is watching. There's one that is just southeast of Hatteras. Slight chance for some development with this one, but likely just going to merge with the front. Also, about 1,000 miles east of Bermuda, there's some strong winds with this one. That is also going to kind of merge with the low in the front. Could become tropical, about a 40% chance. Not likely going to be tropical this one, but strong winds, coastal flooding, and high surf expected there near New England as that storm system moves away. So these lows will be moving away and then we'll be turning our attention to that front that is coming in. You can see some of the rain though associated with those lows up over New York State and New York City. For us, we've got mild air coming in ahead of this front. Then the front starts to push our way into Saturday. Right now that front is producing some winter weather out to the west and it will be moving in here by Saturday. Don't think it's going to bring any rain east of the mountains. There's just a very, very slim chance. So your Friday evening plans east of the mountains are going to be dry with temperatures in the 70s. And then as you head into Saturday, a lot of events going on. One of them is the thriller Color Run and Monster Dash on the Jonesville Greenway. At 9 a.m. is the 5K, 10 a.m. is the Monster Dash. They are encouraging Halloween costumes. <laughs> and you can actually bundle up a little bit because temperatures are going to be in the upper 50s in the morning. We do have a slight chance of a passing shower with temperatures in the upper 70s by Saturday afternoon. Winston-Salem State is at home this weekend. Kickoff is at 1.30. Warm in the sun. We'll have passing clouds as well as maybe a spotty shower, but those rain chances are low at 20% on Saturday. And then we may see some showers in the eastern triad when that front kind of stops on Sunday. But notice the temperatures drop from Saturday to Sunday. I like that seven day, Lenny. Thank you. Well, a new name for the Dixie Classic Fair has a lot of people talking around Winston Salem and the Triad. Sure, city leaders say the name will change next mm -hmm. year. Unclear exactly how the process will play out between now and then, but it will no longer be called Dixie Classic. One man felt so strongly about the current name, he got it tattooed all over his arm. Steve King has this story all new at five o'clock. It's just the name that can be that, that's potentially going to disappear, and I said it's never going to disappear on my arm. Garrett Stewart just got these tattoos in the last couple months after finding out the name of the Dixie Classic Fair was likely going to change. A Pofftown resident, Stewart has been coming to the fair his whole life. We hung out at the fair on Wednesday. When you compare the fair right now to 40 years ago, mm -hmm. what's the biggest change? Um, my fate hurt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, um, about 10 years ago, I tried to deep fried butter. Deep butter's fried a, butter. Butter's a condiment. You shouldn't shouldn't take it to the entree. Wow. How did that taste? Like a mouthful of butter. Oh man. So we're gonna have a Italian sausage please with okay. a little bit of peppers and onions. Alright. Give me one second. Alright.
Stewart put all of his favorite elements of the fair on his arm, from the food. I'm always eating at the fair, and this is my number one place to always stop at Brides. To the pig races. Ben, what's He's his name? Seen. What do you call him? We call him Hammocka Patrick. Hammocka Since Patrick. Since in North Carolina. <laughs> to other priceless moments and memories. But my most favorite ride right there is the Himalaya. Um, my mother loved it. She got to ride it about three years before she passed away. And uh, it's right there in the most painful part of my tattooing. And I can remember my mom right there with that. That's pretty cool too. This fair fanatic now brings his kids every year and loves to compete in the cooking competitions. He says he wishes the name, now permanently inked on his arm, could have stayed the same. In my eyes, it's not offensive. And to everybody else I've seen, it's not offensive. Fair. I'm keeping this for my children to know about. Reporting from the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds, Steve King, WXII 12 News. And his memories won't fade away. We're throwing up nuts for the winter. Yeah, the one clever hiding place some squirrels found that might have you checking a spot at your house a little bit more often than you do. Plus, I tell women, ma'am up. An important reminder from survivors and from doctors and a new report reveals about breast cancer in America. Next at 6, thrown from a driver's side door and dragged on the ground. What we just found out about a local deputy injured on the job and why investigators say a team is responsible. Plus, a tool used by thousands of students forces an evacuation at school. The Triad School District now pulling Chromebooks and the plan to keep students safe. We're back with a look at traffic in the triad. Here's I-40 near Salish Creek Parkway in Winston-Salem right now. Things look great. Smooth sailing for these drivers. Definitely no crashes or anything happening out there to delay these drivers. 
American Airlines will not be flying Boeing 737 MAX planes for the rest of this year. That pushes the planes to turn back longer than any other airline. Regulators have not said when they'll allow airlines to operate the MAX jet again. The plane hasn't been allowed to fly since March, while investigators look into two crashes that killed hundreds of people. Some squirrels in Pittsburgh thought they had found the perfect place to store nuts for the winter. Yeah, they thought. Look at this. Squirrels stored 200 walnuts and lots of grass underneath the hood of a couple's car. The wife says she was driving home and smelled something burning. When she popped the hood, that is what she saw. She says she had her car inspected last month, but hadn't popped the hood since. The couple says it took almost an hour to get everything cleaned up. In a small way, I feel badly for the squirrels. So much work. Took a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you can spend the night in the Goodyear blimp if that's your thing. The company is renting it out as an Airbnb, but just for a few nights. The seats in the blimp's gondola will be taken out and the interior will become wow. a living space for two. A night in the blimp? Fairly reasonable, 150 bucks. Yeah, it will not bad. fly anywhere, though. It'll stay on the ground in Northeast Ohio. The Goodyear and Airbnb collaboration is an effort to promote college football's 150th anniversary. Ready or not, flu season is here. A new evidence suggests this season could be really bad. Doctors look at the flu season in the southern hemisphere to determine how it could be here. And the flu season in Australia was particularly rough, with six times as many cases as last year. Predicting the flu is tough because the virus often mutates through the season. The CDC is encouraging everyone to go ahead and get a flu shot, especially pregnant women. You can get a free flu shot at the Forsyth County Health Department this month. The hours are listed on your screen. The health department's on Highland Avenue in Winston-Salem, and you do not need insurance or an ID card. Well, today we are wearing pink to raise awareness in the battle against breast cancer. WXI is partnering with the American Cancer Society this month, and every Wednesday in October, you'll see us wearing pink. And we'd love to see you wearing pink as well. Take a photo of your pink outfit and share it with us on social media using the hashtag WXIIWearsPink. A recent report from the American Cancer Society shows the most up-to-date picture of breast cancer in America. Fewer women are dying from the disease, that's the good news, but overall cases are on the rise and minority women are the most impacted. Tonight, Sarah Dolliff shares an important reminder from doctors. More than a decade after being diagnosed with breast cancer, show Crow is singing the praises of early detection efforts like mammograms. Getting one helped save her life. Early detection is our greatest weapon until we have a cure. In a recent report, the American Cancer Society estimates some 268,000 women will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer this year. More than 41,000 will die, black women at a higher rate than white women. Those numbers, while staggering, represent a continued drop in death rate since 1989. We're doing a much better job in terms of early detection with mammography and other approaches to uh, finding breast cancer early, and our treatments have gotten much better as well. However, the number of cases is climbing, perhaps due to women having fewer children than they did in the past. Another possible risk factor, an increase in obesity. Doctors recommend regular self-exams at home. You might feel a mass that you didn't feel before, or it's tender, or it's tender to touch, or it's painful. And also if you have uh, maybe some discharge from the nipple that is concerning to you, that is when we want people to go to their doctor. Even women with no family history of breast cancer should start talking with their doctors about mammograms around 40. Cheryl Crow has a message for those who may be apprehensive. I tell women, ma'am up. Cancer fighting words from a vocal survivor. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. The American Cancer Society says women who are at high risk for breast cancer will most likely need to start screening earlier, but they recommend they talk to their doctors first. That's all for WXI 12 News at 5. Talitha Vickers joins Kenny Beck next at 6. WXII 12 News at 6 starts right now. Classrooms evacuated after a laptop starts smoking and smoldering during class. I'm Steve King live in Louisville with what school district leaders are doing to prevent this from happening again. Plus, it's food day at the fair. Find out how you can get in for free and help your neighbors feed their families through the holidays. Plus, FEMA denies Dorian aid to four counties in North Carolina devastated by the storm. How Governor Roy Cooper is responding and what this means for the people still rebuilding. 
First at six, breaking news out of Davidson County, where a Lexington teenager is now charged with assault on a law enforcement officer. Yeah, this comes after a deputy says he was injured during a traffic stop earlier this morning. Deputies say they tried to pull over Nicholas Myers in the area of Bradley Tysinger Road and Old U.S. Highway 52 today, but they say Myers sped off. Investigators said the deputy was thrown from the driver's side door of Myers' car and was dragged a short distance as well. The deputy was taken to the hospital for injuries. Myers was later arrested. Myers is being held on $85,000 secured bond and will be in court tomorrow. 20,000 laptops are being pulled from use in Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools after one of them today overheated and started smoking. Yeah, it happened in a classroom at Louisville Elementary School this morning. Our Steve King joins us live from that school where it happened. Steve, what do we know? Well, no students were harmed when this all happened around 945 this morning. We do have images that the Louisville Fire Department tweeted out earlier today of the laptop after the issue was solved as far as the smoldering and smoking goes. But here's that laptop. This is a 2015 model. We're told that a student yelled fire, fire when this all happened and the teacher immediately evacuated the classroom before a staff member pulled the fire alarm. But fire district leaders do say that there were no flames visible at any point. Now everyone was able to get out of the building safely. A staff member used a fire extinguisher on the laptop to get it to stop smoldering before the fire department arrived and used a fire suppressant. Now 20,000 of these 2015 Google Chromebooks are being pulled from operation and the school district is evaluating the newer model Chromebooks as well to make sure that they're safe to use. If they're deemed safe, those newer models will go back into operation, but the 2015 models are done here in Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools. Meanwhile, the principal of Louisville Elementary says that they had a fire drill just this week and she is proud of how her students reacted this morning. I think that right now our mindset is you know, take a breath and that our children are safe. And that is always our top priority is our, our children. And once we knew that every child in this building was safe and every teacher, then, you know, it is scary. And, and I think it's, um, it's a good practice. It makes it everyone really, for especially at our school, will know now this practice is worth it. Now, these Chromebooks do not go home with the students. They always stay at school. Now, we have reached out to the manufacturer of the Google Chromebooks, but have not heard back at this time. Now, school district leaders say they believe that this issue originated in the battery of the laptop because this all happened when the laptop was not plugged in. However, they say that they are not 100% sure that it's because of a default uh, defective battery. It is important to note that every single parent in Louisville Elementary was notified about this incident after it occurred again, nobody was injured. Reporting live in Louisville, Steve King, WXII 12 News. All right, thank you, Steve. We have reached out to other local school districts to find out what they're doing. Yeah, some of them say they do use Chromebooks, but district leaders say they have not had any similar issues. And right now, no other districts are planning to pull their laptops out of schools. A truck crashed into the back of a school bus today in Winston-Salem. Busy day in the district that sent the bus driver to the hospital with some neck trouble. All of the children are safe. Police say the bus was taking students to Mount Tabor High School and the truck driver did not slow down. Police say the bus had about $600 worth of damage and the truck has thousands of dollars worth of damage. Primitivito Jimenez was cited with failure to reduce speed and driving without a license. A soldier from Fort Bragg is accused of raping an Alabama college student. Military investigators now have 27 year old Ryan Petro in custody. He was arrested while deployed to Afghanistan. Auburn, Alabama police charged him with five counts of first degree rape dating back to last year. Investigators say he sexually assaulted a 19 year old Auburn student in May of 2018 at a hotel. Detectives say the victim was an acquaintance of his. Petro is, as we mentioned, behind bars tonight in Alabama. Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina is working on some new protocols following an incident involving its now former CEO. Yeah, Dr. Patrick Conway resigned months after being charged with DWI and child abuse, and the company was criticized for how it handled that situation, including by the state's insurance commissioner, Mike Causey, who called on Conway to step down. In a statement released today, the board says, quote, while we cannot undo the events that unfolded over recent weeks, we can act to restore your trust. To that end, our board of trustees is developing new enhanced procedures to improve transparency in the reporting of significant events. Yesterday, Conway was found guilty of DWI and child abuse stemming from a June 22nd crash in Archdale with his children inside his SUV. His attorneys plan to appeal. 
Well, a big, big crowd is waiting for the Reverend Franklin Graham in Greensboro tonight. It is one of several stops in his Decision America Tar Heel State Tour. Bill O'Neill joins us live once again from the White Oak Amphitheater. Bill, good evening. Good evening. We have a huge turnout here. Crowd tells us they're expecting to hear a little bit of politics, a little bit of religion here this evening. And Franklin Graham, no doubt, will not disappoint them. A lot of chaos. The chaos Franklin Graham spoke about Sunday in Raleigh could apply to both politics and religion. But the preacher says there's only one answer. And I think the only person that can solve the problems of the is not politicians, it's God. Franklin Graham, a strong supporter of the president, will no doubt speak to a crowd who shares his political beliefs this evening. I think there's a reasonable strategy in preaching to the converted, in, in sort of, you know, uh, making sure that, you know, from his perspective, that people who support the president have a reason, you know, that he's giving them more of a reason to support the president. UNCG political scientist David Holian says Graham doesn't need to make a political speech in order to share his support of the president. He says the like-minded crowd will still get the message. I don't think there'll be a lot of politics. I'm hoping there won't be, but I feel like a lot of Christian values are at stake right now. And, and politics is involved. <laughs> Progressive Christians like Frank do disagree with Franklin Graham's support of the president. He says the president has been on the wrong side of every issue from health care to asking foreign governments to intervene in U.S. elections. If you're going to ask people to make a decision to support this president, then I think you're on very thin ice. Franklin Graham scheduled to speak less than an hour from now. And again, we are at the White Oak Amphitheater on the Coliseum grounds in Greensboro. I'm Bill O'Neill. This event, by the way, is free. It starts at 7 o'clock. Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Bill, thank you very much. In the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, Governor Roy Cooper says FEMA has denied individual assistance for people in four counties hit hardest by that storm. Carteret, Dare, Hyde, and New Hanover counties were assessed by local and federal officials who deemed FEMA did not need to send them extra assistance. The aid would have gone to help with temporary housing, building repairs, and fixing storm damage. FEMA has approved public assistance in these counties to help with the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian for things like local county cleanup, debris removal, and things like that. The family of a man who got sick with Legionnaire's disease is hiring a trial attorney. Now, the family says that he was diagnosed after he attended the North Carolina Mountain State Fair in Fletcher. The local health department says more than 100 people have been diagnosed with the disease, and most of those people went into the Davis Center, that event center there, while at the fair to walk by hot tub displays. Here in the triad, organizers of the Dixie Classic Fair are taking extra precautions to make sure what happened at that fair does not happen in the triad here. Well, fairgoers are not allowed to bring in any handheld miss fans, and there are no misting stations on the fairgrounds this year. The use of decorative fountains has also been suspended, but there are clean water fountains in the annex and education buildings for fairgoers. The kids' water ride is also being cleaned every single night. Six people at Elon University are battling mumps right now. That number has gone up this week. Doctors recommend you get a vaccine, wash your hands as often as you can, and disinfect surfaces and doorknobs. The Guilford County Health Department is running a vaccination clinic a little bit later this week to hopefully stop the spread of mumps at High Point University and in other locations. That clinic is open to students, faculty and staff. They do need to present their insurance card and High Point passport card. There are two locations, the Student Center or at Cottrell Hall, the Kushner Ballroom. Vaccinations will be given from 10 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon tomorrow and Friday. And of course, while that's going on, flu season is also starting to ramp up. Doctors offices all around the Piedmont Triad are making sure that you and your family have a vaccine available if you'd like one. You can get a free flu shot at the Forsyth County Health Department this month. The hours are listed on your screen right there. Health Department is on Highland Avenue in the city of Winston-Salem. You do not need an insurance card or identification. 
Electric scooters are coming back to Winston-Salem. The city announced Zagster will put out 100 spin scooters on Friday. Another company, Veo Ride, will also has also filed an application with the city and also hopes to put its scooters on the streets by the end of the month. Last November, the city council voted to ban bird scooters, but members approved an ordinance in March allowing for the return of these scooters. Under that ordinance, scooters can only be used from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. by those 16 and older. People must also use scooters on streets, not sidewalks, and obey traffic laws that apply to vehicles. When you're in elementary school, does it get any better than a brand new playground on a beautiful day? I don't think it does. This was the scene at Spee's Global Elementary School in Winston-Salem. The district partnered with American Airlines and Carter's Kids to build this playground. It has everything. Climbing walls, ladders, slides, swings, you name it. Kids have that, you know, that dream of crossing the monkey bars. They have that dream of getting down the slide. They have that dream of accomplishing something, and this helps to, uh, to create those dreams and accomplish those dreams. Carter's Kids is a nonprofit that helps to build playgrounds all across the U.S. Still ahead, do you need an idea for dinner tonight? If you order pizza, there's a chance that you could get it for free and have it delivered by a fire truck. If you know an Atlanta Braves fan right now, give them a hug. We're going to break it all down and tell you why next. Ooh. All right. Well, you know, out there today we had sunshine after some morning clouds. You're looking at downtown Mount Airy. They are getting set for the autumn leaves festival. We've got some autumn air. Will it last into the weekend? I'll let you know. Tonight we have pictures from the front lines as Turkey attacks America's Kurdish allies following that virtual green light from President Trump. Also an NBC exclusive sit down interview with Bernie Sanders about his heart attack and political future on Nightly News.